2005, a man named Sam Kamkar exploited a vulnerability in an early social networking site called MySpace. Within 20 hours, the code that he wrote had taken over 10 million users' accounts. The code, later dubbed the Sammy Worm, did three things. First, whenever anyone viewed an infected account, they became infected as well. Second, every infected account sent Sammy a friend request. Third, every infected account's heroes section had this sentence added to the end of it. But most of all, Sammy is my hero. <laughs> While this example is relatively harmless and more than a bit funny, it illustrates how easy it often is to exploit websites. This is a graph of the propagation of the worm since its release. Whoa. Most types of web-based attacks have increased in frequency over the last two years, and these are only the cases that have been reported. New ways to hack websites are being discovered every day, and while some people choose to tell the site's administrators, many do not. In February of 2018 alone, over 33,000 websites were attacked. When a website is successfully exploited, it can be defaced, infected with malware, or even shut down. This is a problem that most companies are aware of. Google's bug bounty program, for example, gave over $3 million to those who could advise them on their security after breaking it. But the problem is far from solved. If you were someone who is responsible for the security of a website, none of this information should be new to you. Hopefully, your website is already secure. But this talk is not for you. It's for your everyday user. Whenever a computer program or, any, or a website is at fault, it's the users who get hurt. In late November of 2018, the Marriott Hotel chain had a massive data leak that exposed the credit card numbers of up to 500 million customers, leaving them vulnerable to credit card fraud. You as a user may not have the ability to upgrade the quality of security of the websites and services you use, but it's helpful to have at least some knowledge of how the internet is secure, and it will ultimately help protect you. Over the course of this semester, I set up to learn as much as I could about web security and how it works, and I made a website summarizing what I discovered. <laughs> I'd like to give you a window into one part of web security, as well as some steps on how to start learning by yourself. The first type of web-based attack is called cross-site scripting, or XSS for short. Without proper security, when you write a comment on a blog or a profile on a social networking site, the text that you write is interpreted as instructions for the computer to execute. This allows someone writing this code to do whatever they want on a vulnerable site. For a while, Twitter was vulnerable to XSS. Someone decided to write some code and a tweet that made it so that whenever anyone else viewed this tweet, the retweet button was automatically clicked. Thankfully, the problem was solved, but not before the tweet had been retweeted over 67,000 times. The second type is called Structured Query Language Injection, or STOL. <coughs> At its core, it is the same vulnerability as XSS, the first definition, being able to execute instructions instead of just text. The difference is that the SQL language is used for accessing databases, while the language used in XSS is for adding special features to websites. Popular healthcare software, OpenDMR, was found to be absolutely riddled with SQLI vulnerabilities, potentially exposing the data of up to 90 million people. The last type is called cross-site request delivery, or CSER. When you submit a form on a website, the contents of the information you put in are bundled up and sent to the computer holding that site. This works great, but because you can see how these forms are constructed, they can be sent automatically and from other websites. Forms are used for everything from banking transfers to account deletion. This means that if you happen to visit a malicious site while logged into a vulnerable site, the malicious site could use your credentials and do anything you as a user could do on the other site, but invisibly and instantly. For example, a vulnerability in Fixbook in 2018 uh, allowed hackers to access the private data of an as of yet unknown amount of users. Whoa. Now, this is a gross oversimplification of what's going on in this attack. And you might feel a bit daunting for you. So did I. I wanted to learn as much as I could about web security and how it works, but I had no idea how to go about doing it. I had to choose a text editor, a platform, a coding language, and it's all a bit much. 
It was a long and windy road, but I've come up with some steps to follow. First, pick somewhere to start. The world of coding is vast, but just look up something like Learn to Code and click on the first link. There's tons of resources out there, and they're all there. When people hear the word computers, they tend to tune out, but the hardest part about learning is getting started. I started with a programming language called JavaScript and watched video tutorials online. I copied down what was written and slowly began to understand what I was doing. Once I had a bit of understanding, I picked a project. Learning by doing is how I found I discovered the most. Let's say I wanted to draw concentric circles with JavaScript. Well, I don't know how to draw the circles, so I look up draw circles JavaScript and get my answer. <laughs> now I don't know how to make the radius increase, so I look that up too and get my answer. This keeps on going as I find new questions, answer them, and find even more questions. Once I've got a fairly good familiarity with the language or concept I'm studying, I pick some new language or concept I've heard of along the way and start all over again. This keeps on going, and before I know it, I can make a website, a file map reader, or anything else I want. This, oh, this is a screenshot from one of my more recent uh, projects. Ooh, pretty. Uh, a visualization of a mathematical sequence known as the Ruckman sequence. As you can see, there are really only two steps. Pick somewhere to start and explore. It doesn't matter where you start, and it doesn't matter where you go. You can set goals and make work to achieve them, but you know that the goals are just an excuse to keep there. Over the course of figuring out all these concepts, some of the projects I made were simply programs that let me practice other concepts I was learning so I could get a better understanding. It was a lot of work, and I want to make it easier for anyone else who wants to try and figure these things out. On the website I mentioned earlier, I had one of these programs. I call it the XSS Playbook, and it lets you try and write scripts to break into the website using different levels of security, ranging from none to not impossible. I wouldn't suggest it for someone just starting out, but you can think of that as your goal. You'll be a computer wizard in no time. <laughs> Thank you.